domestic waste, industrial toxins, agricultural residue. There's no doubt that our rivers are highly polluted and some like the Yamuna are even dying because of wastewater contamination. It is estimated that less than 20% of domestic wastewater and 60% of industrial wastewater is treated. That's too low. Inaction is no longer an option. Is there a science to reducing the amount of wastewater that ultimately resides in our precious water bodies? Can we repurpose this waste in a more progressive and sustainable way? Or perhaps some answers lie with the fine particle thrombosty reactor. Wastewater contamination is a major cause of concern. 70% of industrial waste is dumped without treatment. India alone discharges 48,797 million cubic meters of wastewater every year. Each liter of wastewater discharged further pollutes about 5 to 8 liters of fresh water. What if we had a technology that brings about a complete wastewater recovery without the use of chemicals? Dr. Raja Vijay Kumar, a scientist from the city of Bengaluru, chanced upon an innovative idea. And the result? The fine particle thrombosty reactor. Can you drive home some hard truths about wastewater, poor management of wastewater in India? Uh, industries are the biggest wasters of uh, water. Mm -hmm. Okay, But then, uh, you know, you cannot shut down industries because it uses water. Right. So you have to find out a solution that is that is beneficial for both the industry as well as to the environment. You have to strike a balance somewhere. Today the problem is that uh, uh, the concept of recycling, reusing and recovering the water is uh, uh, not very popular in our country and to some extent it is a little bit popular in, in some of the western countries. But then still a lot needs to be done in this area before we can say that uh, uh, we are zero in wasting water. The fine particle thrombosty reactor is an automatic computer controlled reactor that uses high intensity short wave resonance to get rid of impurities. It's based on the principles of blood clotting in our body, technically known as the thrombosty reaction. Thrombos is formed when number of particles aggregate, aggregate together. Okay, and uh, join together to make a bigger particles. All particles in uh, water, dissolved in water, they are uh, together with the clusters of water. And all particles are charged. Uh, they are charged on the outer surface with negative charges and you have the inner core as a positive charge. Mm -hmm. So the idea is if you would increase the positive charge onto it, the negative charges will collapse and these particles become chargeless. When they become chargeless, they all attract together because there is what's called a Van der Waals force which pulls all the particles together and then you get a, all these solids into a lump and the water is separated out very neatly. So it then can be uh, kind of filtered with any kind of filtering system. What then become the unique features of your reactor? Is one is you don't use chemicals. Okay, then second is it consumes uh, less energy. Third thing is you um, uh, clean up water at a very low cost. Two hundred kilometers from Bengaluru, the Kodagu district is home to many sprawling coffee plantations. Dr. Kumar's fine particle thrombosty reactor is doing its job in this coffee processing industry. The state-of-the-art technology converts all the coffee wash wastewater into processed water. In the coffee industry, to process one uh, uh, kilogram of coffee bean, you need uh, approximately 36 liters of water. So that's a huge amount of water that goes in for uh, making a kilogram of coffee. Now the idea is to reduce this. For that being the objective, we wanted to put this uh, plant here. This is a pilot plant 
uh, which process 25,000 litres a day and the water which comes out is uh, uh, as good as water which we can drink and this water can be reused in the process. That way there is no water discharge from the, from the process, from the pulping process which otherwise for every kilogram of uh, coffee you had to discharge about 36 litres of water. So this uh, would drastically bring down few things. One is the carbon footprint of the, uh, of the process. Second, the water requirement of the process from the point of view of wastage. And this is a great advantage to the industry. A patented process that has the potential to effectively and economically treat wastewater and reuse it. The fine particle thrombosty reactor is on a quest to achieve zero wastewater. The very fact of this invention is that uh, we wanted to uh, you know, recover uh, water uh, and recy recycle it into the system. So that what finally goes into the, uh, into the environment is as least as possible. So by this technology uh, will be when properly implemented, I think we can solve almost 95% of uh, uh, wasted water problems and uh, um, in, in both small scales as well as large scales, uh, you can, uh, this, this is one technology there where you can uh, use, uh, uh, you can solve problems of small polluters uh, with uh, not spending much of their money. So these are some of the uh, things which we, we can uh, think of from looking at from the point of view of uh, the shunya of uh, wastewater. Well, today we've seen two innovations that are working and striving towards the concept of Shunya by reducing the amount of waste that goes waste. For final thoughts, we turn once again to Ravi Agarwal, director at Toxic Links. Ravi, two separate concepts, we tend to muddle them. One is trying to decrease the amount of waste we generate and the other is to actually manage the waste we generate more effectively. Is that distinction important and any advice that you would give on both sides? I think these are very important thoughts to keep in place. So uh, reducing waste, that means minimize waste at all levels. So how you do your packaging and how you, uh, what you do with the packaging at home. This has to be constantly part of your thought of sustainable waste management no matter how much waste you're generating. So if you have a glass bottle, would you want to throw it or want to reuse it? When you're creating new packaging in industry, what kind of packaging will you create? Something which can be recycled, you minimize the packaging for the purpose it serves, or you want to have this huge packaging with a small little product coming out of a box that size. So these, are, these, are, these, are, these have to be kept in, in the mind. And once you do generate the waste, uh, and not call it waste, call it se separated materials, then you have to manage it. So they are not inconsistent with each other. Together they form the basis of uh, sustainable waste management. Converting waste into usable resources, do you see enough thought and action on that front in India? In fact, there is actually very little thought on this, except in this kind of location where people are making a living of what they can. But this is cherry picking. They are recycling what has a market. But what happens to those materials which have no market? Like you see a lot of these materials, plastics lying here, which cannot be recycled. Or you have materials which have high degree of toxicity, like heavy metals in them or other chemicals in them. Even if you recycle them, they cause a lot, a lot of problems. So electronics, old electronics, if you recycle them and create new buckets, those buckets are the same chemicals the old electronics had. So this has to be done with proper thought. And this is very much part of uh, how product designs have to be made and how recycling systems have to be set up. So if you have safe plastics without chemicals, you can easily recycle them. You don't need all these emission norms to recycle them. If you don't have them, you have to have this huge regulatory system to look at what emissions they're releasing and release and, and stopping the emissions. And then what comes out of those emissions, you have to dump somewhere. So it's an endless cycle. So set the standards at the point of origin and That's it makes right. the job that much easier down the chain. What we call cradle to grave in all senses. This show is called The Power of Shunya, Quest for Zero. Is it really too optimistic to imagine in India with zero waste or zero unrecycled waste? No, I think, you know, Shunya itself is a concept which this country gave to the world. So the idea of Shunya itself means that it is doable. It's the idea of infinite and Shunya. So uh, 
if if we if we, if we we'll, this is a country which lives in optimism in a sense i think it's completely doable it needs to get a, it needs everybody to get their act together uh, at a micro level and at a macro level as well and it, it is completely achievable uh, there is no problem in that but as i said we need to think of the scale at which we're dealing it dealing with so scale should not overwhelm it just means the collective individual responsibility which aggregates into the scale that needs to be thought of Waste management is challenging, but it's not insurmountable. We need a mix of motivation and innovation. We need newer and better technologies. We need systems that work for urban India and for rural India. Most of all, we need to feel individually responsible. Better waste management means better public health and greater economic development. And today we've seen innovators who are working towards that goal of zero untreated waste. That's it on this edition of DuPont Presents, The Power of Shunya, Quest for Zero, a show that celebrates science and innovation, technologies that could secure our future, human ingenuity that could reduce our challenges to zero. Till next week then, goodbye.